today on Rock the Park. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. We're in America's oldest park. Wow. Look at that. These guys yeah. have been to a dentist in years. <laughs> We're on the hunt for big adventure. Wow. Something's moving down there. It is a wolf. Oh, I see him. Oh, yeah. Woo-hoo! This is what I call a lookout. Oh, man, do you see that? And big adventure. We've all got our bear sprays. Is on the hunt for us. Look Holy at this. Cow. Yeah! All right! I'm Jack Stewart. Whoa! And I'm Colton Smith. <laughs> we love the national parks. Oh, my gosh. It's all about packing up a car and just doing it. Just hitting the road. Our goal is to visit every national park in this country. And when you go off the beaten path like we do, Whoa. there's no telling what will happen next. Oh, no. Wow! Ready for the time of your life? Yeah! Get set to rock the park. Welcome to Yellowstone, the world's first national park. And perhaps the most famous. Yellowstone is best known for its hot spots. We're talking the largest collection of geysers and hot springs. And one of the biggest super volcanoes on the planet. The volcano is not visible, but the hot spots it creates are, especially on a rainy day like we're having. So this trip to Yellowstone, we want to immerse ourselves with some of the geothermal features that spawn from this super volcano. There's nowhere better to do that than at Upper Geyser Basin. Oh, man. Then we'll take a walk on the wild side, tracking Yellowstone's elusive wolves. We'll cap it all off with a hike to the top of one of Yellowstone's highest peaks, where the wildlife and the weather are equally unpredictable. Woo! I am cold. Yellowstone is located mostly in northwest Wyoming, and at 3,500 square miles, it is one of the largest national parks in the United States. This place is wild. I mean, it's got everything. You've got geysers, you've got rivers, waterfalls, and not to mention the wildlife. Yellowstone is the only place in the world where wild bison, or as they are commonly called buffalo, have lived continuously since prehistoric times. These one to 2,000 pound behemoths were almost wiped out in the U.S. because of overhunting. Today, more than 4,000 wild bison roam the park. We've been in Yellowstone for about five minutes, and we've already had a nice roadblock by a buffalo. Oh my gosh! Whoa, wow. There are more than 300 geysers in the park, the most famous of which is Old Faithful. Hey, how's it going? Park geologist Hank Hessler is an expert on all these hot spots and the super volcano that drives them. It's quite common for people to come to Yellowstone and ask, where's the volcano? Because many people think of a volcano with very steep sides and then a crater in the center. And the Yellowstone volcano is a very different type of volcano. At 55 miles long and 20 miles wide, this super volcano is underground. That's more than 1,100 square miles of magma, super hot liquid rock simmering beneath the Earth's surface. There have been three massive eruptions in the past two million years. Another massive eruption could wipe out parts of the United States and permanently change the Earth's climate. But Hank says he's not worried. We don't know as scientists whether there will ever be another super eruption of the Yellowstone volcano. But the eruptions that are more likely to occur would be much more localized and would not be something that would affect the entire world. So we, we should be safe for the time being, at least our, our couple days here in Yellowstone. Well, um, uh, <laughs> I have no death wish, and I have no plans to leave. <laughs> The incredible heat and pressure of the supervolcano powers four different types of geothermal features in the park. Geysers, hot springs, mud pots, and steam vents. One of the first things you notice at Upper Geyser Basin is a certain perfume to the air. You left rotten eggs in your pocket again, didn't you? Woo! So when you're around these geysers, it kind of smells like rotten eggs would but it's actually volcanic gases, one of them being sulfur. You could smell it for miles. Call me crazy, but when I smell rotten eggs, I think of Yellowstone. Oh, man. When rainwater seeps through the ground and reaches the hot volcanic rocks below the surface, it begins to boil. Superheated water wants to expand. 
and so that pressure forces the water back up to the surface. It's kind of cool. You can see the smaller one that's just bubbling and just churning up all of this steam. Oh, yeah. Somebody just cranked up the jets on the old hot tub. Do you see all the scat and everything around that one? It's everywhere. This is scallop spring. Bison will congregate around the spring to stay warm during the harsh winters here. But sometimes they get too close. It's one of the more deadly geysers they have here in Yellowstone. You can see how it's like dug into the ground. Animals get too close. They break through the snow and the ice, and it's not a good result. The Grand Prismatic Spring in the Midway Geyser Basin is the largest hot spring in the U.S. and arguably the most awesome. The colorful rings surrounding this massive spring are caused by bacteria that thrive on the rich minerals in the pool. The center is too hot to support life, but the edges are cooler and downright intense. Look at that, dude. You've got red, yellow, orange, green, and blue. That is unbelievable. It's a pretty looking bacteria, I gotta say. Old Faithful is one of the park's biggest geysers, and it erupts 130 feet into the air on average. Hundreds of people gather around it every 45 to 90 minutes to watch the show. We're gonna try to see Old Faithful from the top at Observation Point. The half mile hike will give us a panoramic view, 250 feet above the basin. Old Faithful, new view. So, We've got about 10 minutes till Old Faithful goes off. 10 minutes? We should probably run. Okay. Go. Go, 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 go. You gotta go faster than that. We're running and we're running and I'm getting a little winded here. I'm going as fast as I can. You gotta keep up, man, or we're gonna miss this eruption. Old Faithful waits for no one. We're in Yellowstone National Park, racing a half mile up to Observation Point, overlooking Old Faithful, which is about to blow any second. Yeah! All right! That's we insane! Made it. This is the spot. To be up on the mountainside looking down at it and see this iconic geyser, it's awesome. From this perspective, you can really see how massive Old Faithful is. It's awesome. Old Faithful is the most predictable attraction in Yellowstone. Our next adventure is one of the least. Today, we're gonna try to track some wolves. We've seen a lot of wildlife over the years, but this is one of the first times we're actually going out to track something. Good morning. Hi. It's 5 a.m. and we're on our way to meet up with wolf expert Carolyn Harwood from the Yellowstone Association. Are the wolves up at this hour? Yeah, they're actually most active first thing in the morning, so getting an early start is really important. All right, they well, must. <laughs> if the wolves are up early, then I guess we are too. All so. right, All well, right. let's get going. Yeah. <laughs> the wolf used to be a big part of the Yellowstone ecosystem, but they were hunted down almost to extinction. To bring them back, 41 gray wolves were released into Yellowstone in the 1990s. With plenty of easy prey like elk and deer on hand, their number steadily increased to about 450. The wolf population is no longer considered endangered. However, they are still very difficult to spot as they avoid humans. So let's just take these right over here and then I'll show you how to set them up. Okay. Our first stop is an overlook high above the expansive Yellowstone River Valley, where the local wolf packs like to hunt. So Carolyn gives us some binoculars, but then we get the real deal. Massive telescopes. These things see so far that you could be looking 10 miles out. Oh, I need to grab focus. Does help to take the lens caps off. <laughs> <laughs> a wolf pack was spotted feeding on a bison carcass near here just yesterday. I do see something. It could be a bison, though. Oh, yeah. That's a buffalo. Scanning the mountainside. Go with the gut feeling. Keep in oh, mind, the dude. No. What, what do you got? I got a rock. I do have an elk. Where are you I looking? think it's a bull. You, you can look to see if it looks nervous. It would be pointing its nose up in the air if it's nervous because wolves are around. Or if it's really nervous, it might be running. To spot an animal as elusive as a wolf, you really need to look for clues. There's a lot of raven activity out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. OK, yeah. there we go. 
We spotted some kind of carcass, and there are ravens flying all around it. We haven't seen any wolves yet, but this is a good sign that they're in the area. One of the reasons that they may not be here again today is that there was a grizzly bear on their carcass. Ooh. And once a bear decides it wants the carcass, the bear usually gets the carcass. Wolves keep the population of herd animals in check, but they also benefit the bears who gain access to many of those kills. Even a pack of 10 wolves is not gonna wanna face a grizzly bear, because the grizzly, he's the king out here. We're not having any luck spotting the wolf pack with the scopes, so we're moving into the valley. So we've spotted a black bear on the side of the road, so we're gonna go check it out. Oh, yep, see him? Oh, it's a mom and oh, cub. It's a mom. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've got, oh, wow. okay. oh, yeah. Right up on the side of the mountain, we've spotted a sow, a oh, mother, nope. There's and another a cub. cub. And it sounds like we have two cubs. There's two. There's one on the ground down there and then one up in the rocks above. Oh, yeah. Those seem young. Those are probably this yeah, year's cubs. Those are what we would call koi, or cubs of the year. Very yeah, cool. So Roughly 600 black bears live here in Yellowstone, making them quite easy to spot. We've seen elk. Bison, now black bears. Now we just need to see some wolves. To increase our chances, Carolyn is taking us to an old den. Bring your binoculars. So. We've all got our bear sprays, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Bear spray check. Whew. So since there's not an actual trail here, which is one of the really cool things about where we're going, we'll spread out instead of walking in a single file line so we don't create a trail, OK? Yeah. Okay. We are trying to go exactly where these wolves eat, where they live, and we think that it's gonna be the best way to try to catch a glimpse of them. So clearly we have buffalo around here. Yeah, this scat looks pretty fresh. You wouldn't think that a 2,000 pound animal could hide out here, but they can. Yeah, we don't wanna get too close to those guys. No, not at all. Despite their massive size, bison are fast and can run up to 40 miles per hour if they feel threatened. Holy cow. Actually, I think it was a bull, not a cow. <laughs> yes, you're right. That is a bull. Oh, man. Wow. We've got the remains of a carcass here. Uh -huh. You said multiple wolf packs had come to this to feed. We had more than 20 wolves in the area wow. while this carcass was fresh. Healthy bison can easily defend themselves against wolves. So this one may have been sick, injured, or alone. Can I pick the skull up? Yeah. This is amazing. Wow. Look at that. When there's a bunch of meat, like muscle and fur and everything still on that head, it probably would weigh close to 200 pounds. Wow. <laughs> I think they fit. Yeah, they looks about right. <laughs> this is incredible. Look at his teeth. These guys have been to a dentist in years. <laughs> Wolves can eat up to 20 pounds of meat in 10 minutes. They have to make the most of a fresh kill because they never know when their next meal is coming. We've found their food, now it's time yeah. to go knock on their front door. Yeah, exactly. Coming up, our quest to find wolves continues. Holy Look at this. Cow. But what finds us is just as surprising. Oh man. Okay. These are fresh too. And right here. Look at that. There's the claw. We're tracking wolves in Yellowstone National Park. We haven't seen any yet, but we've spotted plenty of prey. Oh, you see that? Yep. Nice. Yeah. Both male and female pronghorns sport the backward curving horns for which they are named. And about 300 of them live out here in the open sagebrush. Despite their small size and lack of defenses, adult pronghorn rarely become wolf prey for one very important reason. He's the fastest mammal in North America, he isn't is. he? Yep, 65 miles an hour. That's cool. Yeah. We've been walking for a while now, and we finally see what Carolyn's been leading us to this whole time. It's a wolf den. So this wolf den was used by famous wolf number nine. She was the alpha female of her pack, and she was one of the very first wolves brought here in 1995, the first reintroduction. So this is a historic den right here. Very much so. Wolf number nine was the first wolf to give birth in Yellowstone since the early 1900s. She had so many litters that over 70% of the wolves here today are her descendants. We're looking at something that not many people get to see. We've been tracking these wolves since sunrise. We've seen where they eat, we've seen where they sleep, and unfortunately, we haven't actually been able to lay eyes on one. 
The hills up here are a really good place to look. Cool day like this, even middle of the day, something could still be out. I'm scanning like a madman. I see snow. I'm scanning around and I see a rock. And then this rock starts to move. I see something moving, but it's way back there. It's blending in really well. I do see it. It is a wolf. It totally is. That is so cool. Isn't it? Oh, I see him. You really see him? I thought we were oh, going to yeah. get him, too. That's crazy. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah. High five. <laughs> this is awesome. To actually get to observe one of these creatures in its natural habitat is just amazing. It's been an absolutely incredible morning, but our adventure isn't over yet. Here's our trailhead. OK. We're going to spend the afternoon hiking three miles up to the top of Mount Washburn, one of the tallest mountains in Yellowstone at over 10,000 feet. This trail is known for its awesome panoramic views and lots of wildlife. We've spotted a bison right down there. These guys are kind of dangerous. You do not want to get too close to them. In fact, more people get injured by buffalo here than any other type of animal. Give them a space. So we're walking up the trail, and we spot these huge grizzly tracks. Holy Look at this. Oh, man. These are fresh, too. These are definitely grizzly bear tracks. Grizzlies have a boxier-shaped claw. The black bear has more of a rounded cat-like claw. Oh my gosh, look at the size of that thing. An adult male grizzly can weigh as much as 700 pounds. And we're headed in the same direction. We're in the late fall, so right now these bears are trying to get as much food as they possibly can for hibernation. This period is called hyperphagia, and a bear needs to put on at least three pounds of weight a day from berries, pine nuts, insects, and roots before winter. Letting them know you're coming is the best defense. Hey, bear. Hey, bear. Hey, bear. Oh, man, do you see that? Up there? Yeah. Oh, that's like a rock. No, that's a, it just moved. That's a bear. You what, see? Right up there? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. We have spotted what I think is the bear that left those tracks down there. We're lucky because she's headed over the mountainside. Our trail goes around the side of that hill and goes completely in the other direction. Any movement towards us, we're turning around. Yep. I'd say we're about three quarters of the way up the mountain and we're starting to see a nasty storm rolling in. That storm is coming right for us, man. We're expecting a thunderstorm, but Yellowstone hands us another surprise. We only have about half a mile to go straight uphill, but uh, if we book it in time, I think we'll be able to make it. Oh my gosh. Oh man. A surprise snowstorm is bearing down on us as we make the final push to the top of Mount Washburn in Yellowstone National Park. Oh my gosh. Woo. Oh man. But it'll take more than a little snow to keep us from reaching our goal. Oh yeah, dude. Woohoo! We're at 10,243 feet and it was worth it. This is great. And the snow cleared just at the right time. Wow. Woo. Oh man, look at this view. We have a 360 panoramic view of all of Yellowstone. This is what I call a lookout. This is beautiful. And what a perfect cap to our Yellowstone trip started off with fire all the way down in Upper Geyser Basin. Finished off with snow all the way up here at the top of the park. This was an incredible adventure. This place is wild. There's bison, there's bears, and then we went and we tracked wolves. I've never tracked really anything before. I mean, it is such a gigantic park, and there's so many different things that you can do here. I've been coming here for years, and those guys just never get old. They're so out of this world. This place is unpredictable. I mean, it's why we keep coming back, and it's why this is not going to be our last time in Yellowstone. There's nothing like new adventures in America's oldest park. And remember, if we can do it, so can you. Wow. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park.
everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.